Okay, Apple just dropped iOS 17.5 beta 4 and we have it installing right here right now on our iPhone and we are excited to see what this holds. Spoiler alert for this video, as you guys are aware if you've watched any similar videos in regards to iOS 17.5, it is a pretty minor release, especially here for us in the US. Little UI tweaks here and there, little subtle changes, nothing big, nothing to really write home about because iOS 18 is in the pipeline and it's only a couple of months away, as crazy as that is. I'm more curious in this regard to see how far along this has progressed. We actually didn't have good battery life with beta 3. I'm hoping that's improved here. And let's see the build number, how close we are to completion and kind of take a look at when we think the RC will be released. Let's go. Okay, so here we are, iOS 17.5 just finished updating. We will go ahead and do our typical heat check just to see if there has been... No, right off the bat, it's pretty rough. Uh, I was going to say any improvements, but definitely not showing up yet. Again, if you guys don't follow the channel, we like to do this just to show how bad the heat management is. And hopefully somebody from Apple will see this for during updates and just general heat management on iPhones of how terrible it is. And again, as usual, traditionally right in the top right quadrant. That is excessive. That's pretty hot for your phone to run and also not good for battery life. So let me go ahead and log in here. And while I do so, just so you guys are aware, uh, this update did come in at about 520 megabytes. Okay, so now in the device, let's jump into settings, general, about, and see what this new version number is. And okay. We are definitely nearing the home stretch here. This build number is 21F5073B. Again, B signifies that we are very near the end of this beta cycle and should be nearing the RC. So since we're talking about that, let's go ahead and look right into the calendar here. And since we're in the last Tuesday, last day of April, I am assuming that on the 7th, we should actually get the RC build. Maybe not, it is Labor Day, so it could come that following week. There might be a slight delay in May from that, or we might see it on Monday. And then I would say by the 13th or 14th, I would assume that the public release should be available. So, not too long to wait, and then that does give us quite a few weeks in between before June and before WWDC kicks off on, I believe, the 10th. So we'll get all of our iOS 18 stuff, all our new AI tags, and all those new buzzwords that they're going to be using right from there. Jumping around and really just scrolling through, everything seems to be loading up pretty good. Let's go ahead and actually jump into the calculator, or excuse me, clock. And one thing everyone always asks about is the stopwatch now in Dynamic Island. Still not going to come up, unfortunately. I don't know why they did away with that a couple of betas ago, but clearly that is still not working. Let's go ahead and go to music. So no new splash screen there. Let's go to, um, let's do camera just to see if there's anything new that pops up there. Nothing new at all, but you can see it's actually working pretty well. And I will say, right off the bat, it is much more fluid than some of the prior generations were, or prior betas were, I should say. So that is definitely nice to see. Lastly, so we don't have to drag this video out, let's look at the feedback app and see if this is updated. So we actually have updates here today. So iPad and iOS, here we go. We can see here in beta four, it resolved an issue with accessibility app tracking transparency, core motion, it has some new features here. There's eSIM new features where it says new Apple universal link for eSIM install. You can see that web address there. Uh, universal link should all be lowercase, store kit resolved issues, and wallpaper resolved issues. And the wallpaper one says add new wallpaper sheet does not load any content after restoring, restoring device. Glad to see that's fixed. We didn't experience that, but we did hear about that nonetheless. Um, we will be going ahead and jumping into watchOS 10.5 right after this. And you can see there's a couple resolved known issues here from StoreKit as well. So again, not going to really drag this one out. Nothing new is going to be in this build. We know what we're looking at. It's very minimal again in nature. So on to iOS 18, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.